Good. All right, so Jacob Kasher joined by uh, the Miracle, Lerone Murphy today. How are you doing, Lerone? More good, man. Um, not long back from training, ready to go again in about an hour's time. Right on, man. And uh, you're coming off a huge uh, second round knockout over Makwan Mirakani. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you getting extra love in your city or anything like that ever since coming home? Yeah, I always get love in my city, man. Everyone loves what I'm doing and... Um, I just want to bring the UFC back to Manchester. That's my goal. Yeah. And um, so I've heard you say a couple of times, too, that it's kind of like bad luck because they booked you and you haven't had the best luck. But you're still hopeful, right, that you can headline a card out there or something like that. Yeah, of course. That'll be that'll be if I'm going to headline it, that'll be, that'll be a few years. Yeah. Anyway, at least a year. But um, I've heard I've heard the coming to London in March, but I don't know I don't know if that will happen or not. But it'd be good to get on the card in London anyway. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so let's just go back a little bit to the uh, Amir Khani fight. Mm. Um, how was training camp leading up to it? I know even like when you got into the octagon, you kind of said in the first round it took you a minute to wake up. Mm. Um, what what happened with that? Was training camp okay with you and everything like that? My training camp went perfect. Actually, I felt great. Um, my weight cut was better than any weight cut I've had, and then on the day it was just like it was just a weird day, man. I don't I don't get what it was like. For one, my legs didn't come back underneath me. It felt like felt like I was a bit drained on the day, and then it's just like mentally, it just felt like I couldn't get get my mind into like fight mode. Like it just like felt like I was going to training or something. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so it took me like a, a round to, to, to know I'm in a fight almost. And it's like after the first four minutes or so, it was like, all right, let's go. Let's switch on now. Yeah, almost after because you took a loss in the first round, you know. So was it kind of just put you in a position where you have no choice but to wake up kind of? Yeah, but I already I already planned for the first round to go like that anyway. I knew I knew you'd come strong in the first round and I knew. I knew he, he will go down and down from that. So that was the game plan anyway, to stay, stay safe in the first round and then just pick him off, second, second and third, go for the finish. But um, I can't afford to drop rounds against this these top guys, so I need to get, get out of the system. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, you got it done in a couple of seconds in the second round, but definitely mm-hmm. want to work on just, like, getting more ahead to start the fights, huh? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Um. So actually, I mean... Dude, they've stacked you up against all kinds of grapplers, it seems like, right, since you've gotten the UFC. And mm-hmm. um, so tell me a little bit, how how's your wrestling so good? Because I think you started in kickboxing, right, initially? I didn't start, I didn't start in anything. I started MMA about pro- probably like eight years ago now. I started MMA fresh. I, would, I didn't come from any background, but um, I was working with primarily strikers. So uh, I, did, I probably didn't even wrestle for the first three years of – my training at all so I'm just playing catch up with that but my grappling's like I didn't really get to show it in the last fight because I was, I was thinking defense 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 but my grappling's a lot better than I showed anyway yeah um I mean do you train with a couple of Dagestanis I feel like you might yeah I've got a few yeah. Dagestanis in the gym little Libra uh Farouk Magdi a lot of sh- killers man killers what are they um what's the difference between those guys I mean if you are able to compare with like other wrestlers and then the Dagestanis, it seems like they're on another level. Yeah, it's like it's 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 weird. It's like they've got a different kind of strength and a different kind of positioning where to put the weight and stuff like that. It's just a different type of wrestling. And it's like even if you sprawl the first and defend the first takedown, the shooting again and again and again. So it's just like but I feel like it's a different different style of wrestling. Okay, like chain wrestling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, they're always at the top of the Olympics and everything like that, too. So I don't know what it is over there. Something in the water. Sure, something in the water. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So how long did you end up staying in Vegas till you came home? Was it you fly home right after? My fight was in Abu Dhabi. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So Abu Dhabi, yeah. Literally, I I think the fight was on Saturday. Stayed Sunday and flew home Monday morning. Okay. So pretty, pretty much straight away. Right on. How long did it take you to get back to training? I mean, pretty quick or? Yeah, I was training after two days. Uh, I think I started training on uh, Tuesday, straight back okay. in. 
I didn't take no damage in the fight at all. So I was fresh. I was fresh, ready to go again. Straight back yeah. to it. And uh, so what, a little bit about your training routine, even like what's your what's your training routine? You kind of wake up, go to practice. You told me you have strength and conditioning coming up. Um, yeah. Maybe like a practice later tonight or something like that, too. Or how does it usually work for you? So uh, the call, the call this season, but I'm in mean now off camp season. So I'm still training twice a day, most days. Well, every day except Sunday. And then when we go into camp, we're ready to just go straight away. We're ready to ready to just pick up the intensity. I'm still I'm still training. I sparred sparred this morning, um, but it's just light sparring. It's not we're not going hard. Um, and then I, I wrestled yesterday as well. So and I ran as well. So I'm just I'm still working. I'm still active. I I want to stay ready. So if they call me, I can fight within two three weeks. It's just wait. Do you know what I'm saying? So and then when when we're ready to jump, jump in camp. We just step up the intensity and nothing really changes. Okay, so maybe it sounds like you might be adding in an extra practice a day or extra few practices yeah. a week when training camp hits. Yeah, exactly that, exactly that. But we we we, we train all year round, man. We, we, like we're trying to we're trying to head for that title. We're not just like, oh, start training when you get a fight. Like it's not that time. Yeah, no, I mean I think that's one of the biggest differences, you know, between the top competition, just staying mm. in shape year round and everything like that. Yeah. Um, did uh so I read up on your bio on uh UFC.com a little bit. So mm. your uncle, I believe, is your like an inspiration to you, right? He was a, mm. a Muay Thai champion, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. a professional boxing coach after that. So yeah. Okay, and then was it uh your cousin or someone who got you into like starting MMA in the first place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was he was into MMA. A lot um he used to tell me, oh, watch this fight, watch that fight. And then a gym opened up in Manchester and he started training there and he's like, oh, come down, come down. And I was just like, I wasn't really interested at the time, but I ended up going down and just stuck to it after that. Okay. And I mean, I was just trying to do a little math probably, but does he happen to be your uncle's, is he your uncle's um, son nah, or something like that? Okay. But my uncle's son's a pro boxer now. He's literally, he's, he's young. He's, he's on to his second pro fight. Um which would be next week or something. But he's like an up and coming talent. He's he's like very good, very good. Okay. Uh, what's yeah. his name? Le he's actually called Lerone. He's named after no, Nick, not named after me, but he, yeah, his dad got his name from me. So he's called Lerone Harrison. But watch out for him, man. Very good. All right, right on. We'll look out for Lerone Harrison then. Um, and then so another question I have for you is. Uh, you have a history with Dominic Cruz, huh? Like he's helped you out. You came down yeah. to Alliance. Yeah, what a is lot. It like man. working with a champion. Different. He just gave me the blueprint, really. And like when when I went out there, the first time I went out there was 2015, and I've been out there a few times since. But just watching the way he lives kind of just gave me the bl blueprint to when I went back home, and it's just like. Pfft. If I want to be a champion, I've got to train like this. I've got to work this hard. This guy is not even got a fight, and he's and he's doing a fight camp, basically. He's doing his sprints in the evening. He's doing his hard practice in the morning. And it's just like, boom, just a big inspiration, man. And just just the way he lives, really. It's just like, just show me a lot. And I think that that's what that's what pushed me, really, to um, pursue the dream of uh, MMA. Okay. And um, was that kind of what, because you're saying he stays fit, right, year-round? Is that what yeah. showed you you need to start doing that? And then you've been doing it ever since, or did you already know? Exactly that. Um, it's just yeah, it's exactly it's exactly that. Really, I used to, I used to. Well, in the amateur days, obviously, it's not as serious. But I used to just have a fight and then just like, not not train, but just do a few here and there. But it's just like you got to stay. You got you got to be outworking everybody else. These guys in when you go to places like Thailand and that, and you see the Russians and that, them guys don't leave the gym. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and it's like. These are the guys you're competing against. So why why you can't take your foot off the gas, man? You gotta keep 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 going. Yeah, I think what a lot of people don't know about like martial arts is that it's mostly the off season what makes you. You know, mm. it's not really like the training camps. It's true. If you watch, um, I watched the documentary on Michael Jordan as well. I think it was Michael Jordan. And he was saying in the off season that he's practicing shots and and that that the off season is when he overtook the other guys. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. And same. it's the same in any sport like off season no such thing as off season that's the time where you improve your skills and and get better 
Yeah, exactly. And even just to add to that, I wrestled in high school and every summer there would be a new kid who just worked all summer long. And then mm -hmm. by the start of the, uh, the new season, he's he's a beast and he came out of nowhere. Yeah. So it yeah. seems to always be like that. The off season's key. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so also, you know, usually you have to take a loss, right, to kind of switch up, make a switch in your career. You mm. were even went undefeated in your amateur career. So mm. what made you kind of want to come down to Arizona and learn from Dominic Cruz and the rest of those guys over there at Alliance? I just want to get the best working with the best guys possible, man, and just just get that experience. Um for me, I know what I know what a loss feels like. Uh, for one, I've had a draw, and then I just know, I just know what like I just uh, what's the word now? I play play a lot of things over in my mind, like even the fight before um, Americani. I thought I knew I was going to knock him out, not like that, but I knew I was going to knock him out, and just just things like that. It's just like you just got to... I don't even know where else, what, what question I'm answering now, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think what I asked you was basically when you usually people take a loss, right? To yeah. like switch things up in their career. Mm -hmm. Usually, if you feel like you're winning everything, there's no reason to switch it up. In fact, it might be bad luck in a way, right? Like that yeah. might lead to a loss. But it yeah, seems yeah. like you went out and seeked extra um extra advice in a way. Mm -hmm. And then like, but you didn't have to take a loss to do that. And I think that might be what has caused you to still stay undefeated yeah you just I, for me it's just learning from other people's losses really and just like do you know what i'm saying you don't need to like i just learn from other people other people's losses and take from them or watch a lot of post fight interviews and stuff like that and just like listen to how they felt and what they changed and what mistakes they made and so i don't have to make them myself but obviously if this is the fight game you can, you can i know you can get defeated at any time and i'm not i'm not really bothered about that i'm not scared about that um it's all about the end goal for me, which is obviously getting to that title. Yeah. So let's talk about that too. I mean, you want to be a champion. I think yeah. you can be a champion. You got the skills for it for sure. Um, you have any kind of personal like map as to how you're going to get there in a way, um, maybe like a timeline or what do you think of thinking about it? I don't have no timeline or no uh, opponent I would want to fight before I just want to get there simple and I feel like if I'm meant to be champion I'll be champion simple as that I'm going to put in the work on my side I'm going to do everything I can on my side and what will be will be we know this fight game is unpredictable anything can happen anything can happen like it, it could be where I end up fighting a top 10 guy uh, somebody gets injured and another fighter end up fighting the top, do you know what I'm saying and, and you within two three fights you, you you fight in the champion like that's just that's just the way the game works yeah it's almost i think it might be more beneficial like mentally to approach it that way that mm. way if something random happens you know it's not like oh man my plan isn't exactly how i figured it would yeah. be no nah, you can't yeah. you can't you can't i don't like to plan things too tough and because if it don't go the way you want it to go then you're disappointed and you've got no do you know what i'm saying like it just turns your head i'll just I just approach it day by day and just, yeah, man. Yeah. Just and then um, go on. Just stay on track. That's all I say. Just stay on track. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just last thing about Alliance. Do you plan on going back there and getting more training in when you have other fights booked? Maybe if you get yeah. some booked in Vegas or anything like that? Of course, man. I, I plan to get out there. I was wanted to come out for the rest of Dom's camp um, in November, but with the new guidelines, with the it's just all a bit mad. Um, yeah. It's just a bit hard to get out there in a minute. So, and obviously I've just got my visa now. So that's the only, me not having the visa is the only reason why I've not been back to Alliance. Um, I would have been back there a good few times. I can't wait to get back there. So hopefully next year I'll, I'll be there. Okay, right on. And then, um, so speaking of the, um, that travel restriction, are you going to be okay with that basically? You're all set? We'll get there. We'll get right. there, yeah. I know it's complicated, huh? We don't even have to get too much into it. <laughs> but also, hey man, are all those people leaving you alone on your uh, Instagram for that story you posted the other day? Yeah, right. I mean, you're just sharing your opinion. Once I put my my video up, that everyone left me alone. But yeah, man, the whole world is on my case. Yeah, but it's bad though because I got like obviously more. Not everybody's gonna message you and with their opinion, but 
more people was happy with what I put then, not happy, not happy. So you just you just never everyone's got their own opinion in it and it's it is what it is. And I don't think I don't think obviously you can have a discussion with somebody, but I don't think you should tell somebody they're wrong because of their opinion. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. No, yeah. I mean, dude, somebody has to kind of give you the other side of the story a little bit. You know, it's all about like get the vaccine, blah, blah, blah. Somebody has to kind of speak out on the other side just to give fairness. So yeah, of course, man. Of course. It's like everyone's scared to do it. Like, speak on what you think is right in it. Simple. If you if you think it's right, then you speak on it. So yeah. What? I appreciated it. So I even sent you a message on it supporting you. So don't even worry yeah. about it, man. <laughs> uh so one thing I kind of want to save a little bit towards the end, and I know you don't, probably don't want to get too into it or anything like that, but it's just where you got your nickname, you know, the miracle. Um, you were shot in the face walking outside a barbershop. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, one of the things I want to ask you is you recovered from that and you made, and you remained in your city, right? Manchester. Yeah. Um, do you ever have concerns that like about wanting to move out? Maybe if you get more famous or more popular in the UFC, just because of what's already happened in your city in a sense. Mm, I hear what you're saying, but nah. yeah. I hear what you're saying, but no, I'm I'm hearing it and it is what it is. But I hear what you're saying though, but I've yeah. never even even thought about it to be honest. I've never even thought about it. I deal with that. I deal with that when it comes in it. I've never really thought about that. Okay, because actually, I mean, just to tell you where I'm coming from with it, I can even maybe put a clip in here. But um, mm-hmm. so I watched this video and Floyd Mayweather said something really similar, and he was saying like how apparently people in his hometown said he switched up. And uh, he was saying, how did I switch up? Like, you guys were willing to, like, you guys have, you know, killed people for for less than, like, a million dollars. Now I'm a multimillionaire. Like, what do I think you guys are going to do to me? From, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm, like, the only one to make it from out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hey. It's, it's the second biggest city in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And um, they, say, they say I changed. I'm fake. You know, I'm, I can't. I'm, like, if you guys around in the hood sticking up guys, who got less than what I got. Imagine what you'll do to me if I'm in the hood. Mm. Wow. So, I mean, it ain't like I don't get nothing back because I, I told them, I'm keeping it real. They talking about I don't keep it real. I said, I'm keeping it real. I'm feeding the homeless for Thanksgiving. I'm feeding your family. You still in the hood, but I'm feeding your mother and your grandmother. But you said I'm not keeping it real. Right. Yeah, it's true, man. It's true. It's just like, obviously, when you come from certain places and some, not everybody's going to be happy for you, in it? And and jealousy is like a, 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 big, a bad thing, in it? So I do get where it's coming from. It's not like, you just gotta watch your P's and Q's in it, really, and just like, but you can't, you can't. I, I've never lived in fear from anything ever, and my family's here, my friends are here, so I'm here in it. Simple. Um, what will be will be in it. Yeah. Well, I hear you, man, and you gotta stick around your family. So I know it's not that easy. Um, yeah. but another one. I mean, we can we can get off this topic because it's not the best topic to talk about. But there was um like another rapper. Um, his name is Young Dolph. You familiar with him? A U.S. Oh, rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's you know. So sometimes it seems to be a trend, and that's why I just wanted to mention it. See what you think about it. True, but, man. Yeah. The time Nipsey Hussle, another one like. Yeah. You can't like. Especially gotta be when safe. You, yeah, when you've made it, bro. Just, like the streets don't love anybody in it. It's as simple as that. Like exactly i know and then that's why i was saying because you have intentions of being champion so just brought it up but aside from that um i'm actually curious because it seems like people uh skim over like your upbringing a little bit how was it just growing up in manchester like with your parents and stuff like that um like did you have were you taken care of was it a little bit of a struggle just give me a little idea of how you grew up uh do you know what i i would never say oh i've had it hard and stuff and because my mum always done like what she could for us, do you know what I'm saying? Obviously I didn't have the best of everything and whatnot and stuff, but on Christmas we got stuff and on birthdays we got stuff. I can't ever say, oh, I didn't ever get anything as a kid or I had it hard because I didn't really, really, but I did have a tough childhood in terms of just getting into trouble and stuff with, with my cousins and my brothers and just just going out and just just doing our thing. But like other than like I wouldn't say I grew up poor but I didn't grow up with like the best of everything anything and my mum did live in a council house which is a, is that public housing in in America um 
So yeah, we did. We, I didn't. I wasn't like the poorest of kids, but I, I didn't grow up with everything. Okay, and I mean sometimes it's like all you know, right? So it's not that yeah. big of a deal because it's all you know. Yeah. True. 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 Yeah. And um, so I guess I got a couple here that I just wanted to write down in case I didn't get to ask you. So let me see here. Um, so I got one. Your recovery. Yeah. Uh, do you mind just giving me some advice or just even fans advice? How, what's your recovery process? Um, maybe like, let's say you had a whole day of training, like mm. um, off season. Let's say you're in off season right now. You practice this morning and then you're going to go to strength and conditioning later. So what are you mm -hmm. doing for recovery? Maybe in between or after you're stretching? It's just stretch, stretching for me, stretching and obviously your diet is the main thing. Um, I'm not really into all the fancy uh, gadgets and stuff like that. I just stretch. I've got a release ball, some little, like a little, it's like a tennis ball, but hard. Um, and I just look, try to look after my body in, in terms of that. And rest is getting sleep is probably the main thing. People underestimate the power of sleep try try sparring on on four hours sleep and then try sparring on seven eight hours sleep and you'll see the difference so mm -hmm. for me it's just getting a good night's sleep and stuff like that and then having your days where you go hard so today today's just like in off camp I don't really have the hard hard days but um some days I have like a sparring and I have condition in the evening which is like a red day what we call a red day and then the day after that I'll have a green day where I'll just go in and do technical work and that's how we recover instead of you can't just go hard 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 just yeah down. so keeping it balanced it sounds like and then um stretching do you have a routine at all when it comes to stretching no nah, i just go for, i just go through i've been doing a similar similar mobility work and stuff like that for years now so i just kind of know it off by heart i just go over the same stuff okay and then how many hours of sleep are you getting like you trying to get at night maybe like eight seven eight like you said or do you know what? I'm I'm a light sleeper, so I'm, at the minute I'm getting seven max. When it comes to fights, when I got a fight and stuff, then two the two weeks I hardly sleep, and that's what I think went wrong in this camp. I hardly slept for the full week, fight week. I didn't sleep. Okay. What do you? Is there anything you've thought about how you can correct that in the future? I mean, I guess you. I don't know if it's on the USADA list or not, but melatonin it like yeah, your body naturally it, makes it. Is there anything you can do for that? Yeah, there's giving us melatonin, but it wouldn't. It's just like, yeah, it gets you to sleep and whatnot. But it's, it's for me, it's staying asleep. Like I'm just up, and especially when you're water loading as well, you're just peeing every second. It's just hard. But oh, I yeah. going through the same thing, innit? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You guys are all going through the same thing. So, the your opponent probably can't sleep just as much as you, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's end on this one then. Um, when you're looking to get back in there, and then. I don't know if you're the kind of guy to call anyone out, but if you are, then, you know, let me know who you want to fight. But when are you looking to get back in there? I just want to, I want to get back in there. Late Feb, March, it'd be a good time for me. Really and truly, I should have just had a quick turnaround because I was healthy, but it's what it is. Um, and in terms of who I want to fight, I want to just, I want, I want to fight somebody in the top 15, but if not, just give me a, like a, a good striker outside of the top 15 that, I'll, that I can put on a show with and we'll go from there. Okay, so you're looking for a top ranked opponent. I I agree with you too. You need a striker. You need a just striker. To see what's what, just to see what's what, man. Like I did, yeah. The last fight was a bit messy, and and I did. I feel like I didn't get to show my myself, man. But yeah. Yeah, and you know you can't get too used to those wrestlers. You gotta, you know, it can't be too long since you fight like a striker, right? Because then all of a sudden, mm. two years later, you're like, damn, I haven't fought like a, like a kickboxing specialist in a minute. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and you get thrown in the deep end with a kickboxing specialist. So you got you got to mix up your fights, man. This is about growth. It's martial arts at the end of the day. This is about growth and and um, trying to be the best fighter you can be. So yeah, uh, fighting a striker or just a just a well rounded fighter next would be good. Not somebody that's just gonna crotch sniff or fight. Yeah, right, right. And uh, okay, I got one more for you. You're training today. Kind of give me yeah. an idea of what you're eating. And then also, I'm curious, like, before a fight, how do you like to keep it? You like to keep it light, fruits, or tell me about that. So I'm a big foodie. I like to eat. So right now, I'm eating a lot of food right now. Off season, I'm eating a lot of food. Um, I like a lot of seafood and whatnot and the carbs and the ice cream. So right now, 
I wouldn't be, I'm not eating like an athlete, but I'm still in shape because I'm training, you know. Um, but um, fight day, we just try, we, we I eat clean, but I have my carbs. I have a lot of carbs early. So in the morning, I'll have porridge. I'll have my, to- I'll have my toast. I'll have scrambled eggs. Um, and then I'll have a heavy lunch, which would be either pasta and fish or rice and fish. And then from then, I'll just taper it off a bit. I start thick. I might have lost you for a second there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you, so you taper off um, after your lunch then, and then you just yeah, basically yeah. don't eat till after the fight. Yeah, I just eat like protein, like bars, like ca- 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 um, carb bars, or just just something to give me a bit of energy because you you want to eat you want to eat up to about two hours before a fight. That's what I do anyway. But it's hard to eat because your adrenaline is kicking and everything like your mouth goes dry like that's that's what mine does anyway but it's hard to you have to force yourself to eat when you got a fight okay and then um yeah that should do it man i had one more but like a follow-up on that but it skipped my mind so i'll just let you go on that i know you got training soon too right yeah yeah right on brother well i see you all man good talking to you bro